Hi, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to lesson 48 of Chef's Apprentice, learning to cook like a pro one small plate at a time. This lesson is seared sea scallop with grilled prosciutto and roasted parsnip and apple puree. This dish introduces an underused root vegetable, the parsnip, which looks like a white carrot. Here you will make a parsnip and apple puree as a base for a protein, in this case a sea scallop, which is a great way to integrate the vegetable and protein components of a dish. This preparation also calls for prosciutto ends. Ask your butcher or deli counter for, for a prosciutto end, which is the end of the prosciutto ham shank left over after the ham has been sliced away. Slices of the desired size and thickness can be cut from the prosciutto end. Techniques today are peeling, dicing, coring, and chopping, seasoning, roasting, sweating, deglazing, and reducing, bringing to a boil and simmering, pureeing, adjusting seasoning, sauteing, searing, and keeping warm, plating, and garnishing. So let's start cooking. Now I'm going to show you the mise en place that we need for lesson 48, which is seared sea scallop with grilled prosciutto and roasted parsnip and apple puree. Now of course we'll need some sea scallops. These are the biggest ones I think I've used so far in the course because I found some. These are U10, which means that there are 10 scallops per pound, which means they're pretty big. I found these at Costco and they're beautiful. Uh, we'll also need to have a, about one cup of parsnips that have been peeled and cut into about roughly a half inch dice. Doesn't have to be exact because they're going to be cooked and then they're going to be pureed, okay? So um, uh, this takes about two to three pars whole parsnips depending on how big the parsnips are. We'll also need to have about one cup of apple that has been peeled, cored, and then diced into about the same size dice, roughly about a half of an inch. And that's gonna take about a little bit less than one, um, one whole apple. Now you can use a Rome apple, a Fuji apple. I use Honeycrisp, love Honeycrisps. And I've tossed this apple in a little lemon juice because I'm doing it a little bit earlier than I'm using it. If you're, used, if you're gonna do this right away and make the dish right away, you don't need to toss in the lemon juice. But if there's gonna be any period of time between your prep and your cooking, Toss the apple in the lemon juice so it doesn't start to turn brown. Also about one third cup of chopped shallots. <clears throat> we'll also need to have some calvados or calvados, depending on what part of the world you come from. This is an apple flavored brandy. And we're gonna need about a quarter of a cup of that. I'm just gonna eyeball that when we need it. We'll also need to have some chicken stock, uh, enough to cover the vegetables as they're cooking. Probably between one and two cups. I have two cups here. Uh, if I have extra left over, we will use it for something else at some other time. We'll need to have six discs of, uh, I'm using prosciutto. You could also use pancetta. You could use Canadian bacon. You could even use honey baked ham. And those uh, discs of prosciutto are going to be about an eighth to uh, 16th inch to an eighth of an inch thick. I've cut them with this, comp this um, uh, uh, ring mold which is only a bit bigger in each one of the scallops because these slices are gonna go between slices of the scallops, okay? So you pick out a ring mold that's a little bit bigger than your scallops and use those to cut your prosciutto. You could also cut it into squares if you like. It doesn't have to be round. We'll also need to have uh, some olive oil and, <clears throat> excuse me, some high smoke point oil, either avocado or canola. I'm gonna use avocado tonight. And we'll need to have, uh, as always, kosher salt and a pepper mill for fresh ground black pepper. And then finally, for finishing, we're going to need some truffle salt. This is white truffle salt, and mm, it smells great. It smells like white truffles. Truffles one of the best smells in the world. Okay, that is all of the ingredients. We'll break, come back. I'll show you the equipment for lesson 48. Okay, equipment. We will need to have a cutting board, chef's knife, a slicer to slice the prosciutto rounds, peeler to peel the apple and parsnip, uh, ring mold to cut the um, prosciutto rounds, mixing bowl, we'll use that a couple of times. We'll need to have a sheet pan and a brush to oil the sheet pan. We need to have a uh, saucepan for making the puree and a wooden spoon to help us with that. We'll also need a blender. Tonight we're going to be using the uh, KitchenAid, the KitchenAid blender. Need to have a, um, a strainer and a spatula to push the puree through the strainer. 
and uh, we'll need some uh, brown paper and we will also need to have a cast iron skillet and finally we'll need to have a sizzle plate but that's all the equipment right now come back and start cooking okay the first thing on our prep list is to preheat the oven to 400 degrees which i turned on just a few minutes ago next we have to olive oil the sheet pan so we're just going to take some olive oil and then take our brush and brush it around okay next we want to toss the parsnips and the apples in some olive oil and some seasoning Right, next, we want to spread the uh, apples and the parsnips onto the sheet pan, and we're going to put those into the oven, and uh, we're going to roast them for about 30 minutes. We'll check them at that time to see how they're looking. All right, now, while those um, parsnips and apples are roasting in the oven, we're going to sweat the shallots in some olive oil and we're going to give them a little bit of seasoning as well all right we sweated the shallots now we're going to add the calvados and i am going to flame it now you need to be very careful when you do this okay very careful stand back calvados has a high uh alcohol content we're going to burn off that alcohol and then we're going to reduce this sauce or this uh, uh, these uh, shallots with the calvados. We're going to reduce it till it's almost dry. Okay, this is almost dry in the pan. Our uh, parsnips and apples are not ready yet, so what we're going to do is take this off the heat, turn the heat off, and wait until they're ready for the next step. Now we're going to... Um, saute those prosciutto ends we're going to put a little bit of the high smoke point oil into the cast iron skillet swirl it around a little bit it's going to swirl it'll separate or i should say spread more on its own after it starts to heat up now let's see how our oil is spreading out in the pan it's just starting to give off some whiffs of smoke so now we want to saute our prosciutto rounds now these may start to come apart a little bit you need to try to keep them together uh, but you know they're not going to be seen face on they're going to be between two layers of scallop so all we want to do all that's necessary really is to keep generally the shape of a round we're going to saute them on one side then we're going to carefully turn them over and saute them on the other and then drain on brown paper so you can see how these are separating a little bit as they cook. That's fine. You just want to try to keep the general shape of the round. Now these are looking very nice. I'm going to get them nicely browned on each side. Okay, let's turn off the heat and remove them from the pan, put them onto the brown paper to drain. Okay, now these look very nice. We're going to put them aside and keep them warm until it's time to serve. Okay, here are our apples and uh, parsnips after 30 minutes in the oven. Uh, your time may vary depending on how, how big you cut these pieces and also uh, uh, the actual heat of your oven. We preheated the 400 degrees, but sometimes ovens are not exact. Now we're going to add these um, the apples and parsnips to the shallots that are in our saucepan. Now we want to cover them with stock. Just cover them with stock. And you don't want to use too much liquid with the vegetables or the um, puree will be too soupy so you want to have just enough just enough to cover the vegetables now we're going to bring this to a boil and then 
We're going to simmer it for about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, our apples and parsnips are just coming to a boil, so we're going to reduce the heat and we're going to simmer for about 15 minutes. All right, now here are our vegetables. You can see that there's just enough liquid to cover them. Uh, in fact, they're not even covered. But at this stage, after they've been cooked, you're going to lose some of that liquid because of evaporation. Very important in making a puree is that you want it to be about the consistency of applesauce. It's always easier to thin it if it's too thick. It's very difficult to thicken it if it's too thin. This looks pretty good. We can always add more liquid later if it's too thick. All right, now we're going to take the blender and add these this fruit and vegetables to the blender. Try to get as much of the liquid in there as possible. Don't want to leave anything behind. You could use a rubber spatula to get everything out of the pot. I think I've done a pretty good job here, so I'm not going to use the spatula. Okay, now, we're going to get our blender motor. turn it on now when I turn it on you might it, it might be that the uh, the blender doesn't really start to catch on the on the fruit and the vegetables that are inside so what I do is I rock it that helps to get it to mix now let's check it you can see in here that uh, it is mixing uh, but it's not quite as smooth as I'd like it to be. We're going to push it through the strainer, but I want to get as much of this through the strainer as possible and not leave uh, very much of it in the strainer. So we're going to blend it some more. Now this is just a little bit thicker than I'd like it to be, so what I'm going to do is add a little bit of water to this puree and then I'm going to blend it a little bit more. Now I'm adding about, oh, two tablespoons, but you're going to have to judge that. Remember, we're going for something that's about the consistency of applesauce. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Next step is going to be to push this through the strainer. All right, here we have a mixing bowl and a strainer. We're going to push, uh, put the puree into the strainer, and then we're going to push it through the strainer with a rubber spatula. All right, you can see that that pushed through the strainer rather nicely. What's left in there is some of the black pepper chunks, a little bit of the uh, pulp from the apples or from the parsnips. Now, what I want to do is I want to get what's on the outside of this strainer, too. Look how much is there. We don't want to lose that, right? So we want to rinse off this spatula so that we don't get the muck that was left in the strainer. Rinse that off, and then we'll take this off the bottom of the strainer. All right, now let's just check the taste and adjust the seasoning if necessary. Mm, I think it needs a little bit of salt. does not need any extra pepper. We're just going to give it a little sprinkling of salt and mix that in. Let's taste it again. Mm, perfect. Okay. I just want to keep this warm until we're ready to plate up. All right, next step is to toss the uh, scallops and some olive oil and seasoning. Now, uh, they need to be dry. Now, these I patted dry a little while ago. I also left them in the refrigerator uncovered for a little while. Leaving them uncovered in the fridge will also help to dry them out. All right, so let's put them into our bowl here and add a little olive oil, enough to coat, okay? So how much? Enough to coat. And then we're going to use a little bit of salt and 
couple of grinds of pepper, and we want to toss them in the olive oil. Get them well coated, get the, the uh, seasoning well distributed. All right, then I'm going to put them back on the plate. Now, if you are going to be cooking them right away, you want to have them at room temperature. If you're going to be cooking them a little bit later, you can put them back in the fridge. If they're going to be in there for just a little while, you can leave them uncovered so that they stay dry. If they're going to be in there longer, cover it. The stove on about medium heat, we're going to put our cast iron skillet back on the heat, get it hot. And we're using the same skillet with the same oil in it that we used to cook the prosciutto ends. Why? We're building flavors. Insipariere, that Italian term that we've used before. And we're going to put these um, scallops down in the pan, try to swirl a little bit of oil underneath them as we put them down, and we're going to time them three minutes per side. That's pretty reliable for jumbo scallops in a hot pan. Okay, it's been three minutes. Three minutes is going to get us um, medium in the middle. Okay, I'm turning them in the same order that I put them down. We're going to go another three minutes. So I can see that this one in the middle is cooking faster. So I'm going to switch places with this one, which didn't seem to cook as fast. Okay, it's been three minutes on the second side. We're going to take them off. Same order that we put them down. Remove pan from the heat. Turn the heat off. Keep these warm until you're ready to slice them. The next step is we're going to slice these, each one of these scallops into two coins. And they're pretty hot, still, so I'm going to use the, uh, the um, tongs to help me. This was the smallest one. Looks perfect inside. Nice, medium. This is one of the larger ones. Also looks perfect inside. Okay, now let's keep these warm until we're ready to plate up. Okay, we're ready to plate up. We're going to put a little dollop of the parsnip and apple puree in the middle of the plate, just a little bit bigger than the than the diameter of the scallop. Remember, you've got enough, you've got you're making six of these. You've got to make it go for all six plates. All right. Then we're going to take one of the scallops, the just the bottom, and then a prosciutto round. There's a little extra piece for that one, and put this on top. Okay. Now we're just going to garnish with a few grains of the truffle salt and a twist of pepper. That's it. Okay? That is lesson 48. Sea, seared sea scallops and grilled prosciutto with roasted parsnip and apple puree. You can see photos of the finished dish in my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice, cook like a pro. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.